So what is going on guys, a Black Ops Amazing, welcome back to another video on the channel where today we are going to be taking a look at even more crazier conspiracy theories within Call of Duty Zombies. In the earlier days of COD Zombies, there were so many conspiracies that people could come up with because the zombie storyline wasn't as linear as it is now. There are still many mysteries from 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, around that era that we still don't have answers for and it shows you how many we have because I've already done two videos covering a bunch of conspiracy theories but today is the third in this mini series and perhaps the last one where we're going to go over a bunch more so of course if you haven't already seen the first two videos i will leave the links to them down in the description but if you do go in to enjoy this one don't forget to drop a like rating it is really appreciated make sure you are subscribed but let's get into it so our first conspiracy theory of today is a question that i've been asked a bunch of times over the past and that is why is nactor and totin in transit the building from our very first zombies map, Nacht, which we know takes place in German-occupied Europe on an abandoned airfield. Yet we see this exact same building within Transit or Green Run, which is in America. So why can the exact same building from Nacta and Totem, which is a zombies map that takes place in a totally different country, be found in Transit? What's going on? Now, if for some reason you've never played Transit or fully explored it, because this is kind of out of the way, it's not in the main areas. If you take the bus from one location to the other, I think it's between Farm and Diner, or it might be between Farm and the Power Station. But as you're taking the bus, halfway through you will see a cornfield, and if you jump off, go through that cornfield, eventually you will make your way to the Nacht building. But you will notice some slight differences. The building is a lot more withered and crumbled. Some areas that you could access in the original version of Nacht you can't hear because they've been blocked off. The staircase has fallen apart, cabinets and debris is blocking the hell door. Barriers where the zombies would enter in the original aren't here. So the building looks to be a little bit less intact than the one that we see in Nacht. But nevertheless, this is the Nacta and Totem building within transit, which begs the question, why is it here? How can it be in two places at once? What's going on? As far as we are aware, there was nothing special about this building in Nactor and Totem. It wasn't a Group 935 facility. It didn't belong to the Americans or some other group. It was simply an abandoned building located on an airfield that the Germans were using to transport Element 115. But it wasn't a top secret research lab. It was an ordinary building, so why is it in transit? Now, there are a couple of theories that people came up with. The first one being, if you look in the coding, the building for Nact is labeled as the prototype. A prototype is, of course, an early sample of something, a model of something that's yet to be built, kind of a concept. Why would Treyarch label the Nacta and Totem building in transit as the prototype, which seems very random. Surely they just would have called it Nact building or something along those lines. There is the argument to say maybe they called it this in the coding to hide it from people like this who do go through game files and discover things, but it's a massive structure. It's not a hidden Easter egg. It was something people were bound to find pretty much on day one when transit released. Is the name for the Nact building in transit, the prototype, a clue? Was the Nact building first built in America to be an early prototype of the one we saw in Nactor and Toten. The problem with that is Nactor and Toten happens in 1945, transit takes place in the year 2035, so over 100 years later, but that doesn't mean, and we can tell by looking at it, that the Nat building in transit was built in the year 2035. It could have been built in the 1930s, the 1940s, the 1910s, we don't know. So if you'd only knew that, you'd think that might be the answer. But if you go through the game files of World at War or Black Ops 1, Nacto and Totem is also labelled as the prototype in those games. So the conspiracy based off the game files that this must be an early prototype of the building in German-occupied Europe and Nacto and Totem, the actual Nacto and Totem building, that somebody must have built this one in transit first as a test and then later built the actual NAC structure in German occupied Europe. Well, knowing that Nactor and Toten is called the prototype in Black Ops 1 and World at War as well, kind of throws that conspiracy out of the window. But there could be some truth to it because, truth be told, we don't have an official answer. The other one is, well, this isn't really the first time we've seen this happen in our zombie story. Following similar lines, we have seen maps transported through space-time. For example, we know the map Buried, due to temporal rifts and the fracturing of the universe, was teleported from the Old West in America to Angola, Africa, forward in time. A map that originally would have been located on a totally different continent. 
could something similar have happened here? The only problem I have with that again is all of that about Buried was mentioned in the Canorium. So if a similar thing happened with Nacht, you would have thought maybe that would have been mentioned in the Canorium as well, but it's not. But is there the chance that due to temporal rifts and the fracturing of the universe, are characters travelling through space-time that caused the Nactor and Totem building to teleport from 1940s German-occupied Europe to the year 2035 in Transit, Hanford, the USA? That is also a possibility. I think they are the two main conspiracies. But the other one is, well, we know Transit, a lot of what we see in this map, some of the areas, specifically the power plant, but Transit as a whole was used as a testing facility for Division 9. Hence why Avogadro's here and the Denizens. These were creatures, or in Avogadro's case, Cornelius Purnell, that were experimented on, or experimented on themselves in his case. But because this was one of the main places where Division 9 operated, is there the chance that for some reason Division 9 created a replica of the Nat Durant Totem building. The question then is, why? And that, I really can't answer. Because there's really nothing special about it. Like I said, if it was a top secret laboratory or something, creating a replica of it could make sense to maybe practice infiltrating it or something like that. But that would just be a guess. What was going through Troyok's head when they added Nat Durant Totem into transit? We don't know. The last thing I will say is Nacht is a map that we've seen an awful lot of times in Zombies. In fact, I think it might be the most reused Zombies map ever. It was in World at War, of course, being the original. It was in Black Ops 1 when it was remastered. It's in BO2's Transit, Black Ops 3 in Zombies Chronicles. It's in Black Ops Cold War in D-Machine. So we've seen it plenty of times in COD Zombies, but never really in an unexplained way like it is here. It shouldn't be here, but it is, and we don't know why. The next conspiracy theory involves our transit characters, Misty, Malton, Stuling, and Russman, and them still being alive within our zombies story. In our most recent game, Cold War Zombies, I guess technically it's Modern Warfare 3, because Vanguard is a prequel to Cold War. Modern Warfare 3 is a sequel, but it's also going to be a prequel to this year's Call of Duty in 2024. And we're not really told too much about Modern Warfare 3's zombie storyline when it comes to stuff like this, but I suppose... That is actually the latest one. But because we get a lot more information from the Cold War zombie story, we'll just speak about that one. But anyway, as I was saying, the belief is the transit characters very much still could be alive within the Dark Ether. And this was because in the map Classified, we heard a radio from Stuhlinger talking to Richthofen. But the weird thing was, there isn't a zombies map or a point in time where this radio fits in and makes sense. And so the only option is he must have made this phone call after he became trapped in the Dark Ether at the end of Tag Totem. Is this thing on? Richthofen! Hey, Richthofen! You've been gone from my head a really long time! I gotta be honest, I'm freaking out a bit, man! It's, it's so quiet! I can actually hear myself think! Do you know what that's like? It's not nice at all! So, listen, buddy, old pal, we gotta talk. You sent us here, of all places, but you forgot to tell us what to do! It's dark. It's damp. It's, jeez, just really filthy. I, I think the roaches are crawling with roaches. How is that even possible? Wait, shoot. Am I even talking to the right Richthofen? Oh, you could be the other one, right? Or the other, other one. Yeah, you know what? Just, just go talk to your Richthofen pals at the hoity-toity Ricky Gang Clubhouse and find out what the f*** we're supposed to be doing! So we're here, Stuhlinger attempting to contact Richthofen. We know we have multiple different versions of Richthofen in our zombie storyline, hence why Stuhlinger says, am I even talking to the right Richthofen? It could be the other one or the other other one, because we've seen multiple different versions of them. But him saying that, along with him describing how he's freaking out about how he's somewhere that's really quiet, he's in a place that's dark and damp, and filthy, and he can't hear Richthofen's voice in his head anymore. All of this tells us that Strulinger must be making this phone call after the events in Black Ops 4 Zombies. In our very final Zombies map on that game tag, the totem, which takes place in the year 1965, but in the final cutscene of that map, we see everything gets banished to the Dark Ether, including Victus. Stuhlinger, along with Misty, Malton, and Russman, become trapped within the Dark Ether. And that was it. We then witness our main characters. Richthofen, Taku, Nuclei, and Dempsey all kill themselves or they all die, leaving two people left or two children, Samantha and Eddie, to walk off into the light into the new Cold War universe, leaving everyone and everything else behind. 
either dead or trapped within the dark ether. So that was the very last time we saw the transit crew in Tag Totten in 1965 and then in the next zombies game called War, D Machine, which is in the year 1985, not that it's really relevant because it's a different universe and we have time travel, but the last time we saw Victus was in 1965 and then in 1985 or 83 sorry, or throughout Cold War, we never hear anything from them. We see no evidence of the Victus crew. But we come back to this radio and classified where we have Strulinger telling us that he's trapped in somewhere that's dark, damp and filthy. That he can't hear Richtofen's voice in his head anymore. And like I said, nowhere in the zombie storyline does this phone call fit in, which means it must have been made whilst he was trapped within the dark ether. Which also means... 20 years later in Cold War, even though we never hear about them or hear from them, there is still a small chance that Victus are still alive within the Dark Ether. Now, there are other things that come into play here. Of course, time works very differently. Just going off the top of my head, I could be wrong here, but isn't it something like three days in our world relates to 30 days in the Dark Ether or three months? That's just without me looking it up again. But time in the Dark Ether is a lot faster. But still, if there is the very minuscule chance that in Cold War Zombies they are alive, then that means... Right now in our current zombies storyline where we are at, forgetting Modern Warfare 3 but this year's Zombies Game 2024, Victus could still be alive within the Dark Ether. I then bring my other brain into this and say, well, would Troark ever reintroduce them into the storyline if that was the case? I don't think so. I think most things relating to the old zombies timeline, Ultimus, Primus, all of the other characters and things we've had, I think Troyok are finished with, they're trying to end it. But we have seen things start to creep back in, which means potentially, if they are still alive, could we see Victus again, or at least remnants of them? Or maybe they're not alive. There's all the chance that they died within the Dark Ether. They were killed by zombies, by the Forsaken, they were eaten by him. They were killed by some other Dark Ether creature, or just died naturally. There's actually less of a chance that they're alive than they are dead, but we don't know 100%, otherwise I wouldn't be talking about it in this video. And for the next conspiracy theory, we go back to Transit, talking about the sleeping zombies when you first load up the game. When you spawn in on round one in the bus depot, you will notice all of these zombies surrounding you are still. They are out of it. Their eyes are not glowing, and it's only when you go near them or attack them or run around and make sound, that's when they wake up, their eyes turn on, and they begin to attack you as you'd expect. But it's weird because Transit is the only map that this happens on. On every other zombies map that we have on the 30 or 40 plus, whatever it is, Transit is the only zombies map where you load in and the zombies aren't automatically attacking you. On no other map do we see zombies just standing still, almost looking like they've been turned off. But we never got an explanation as to why this is. Now we do have a piece of equipment in Black Ops 2 Zombies which has this effect on zombies being the MP grenade. Whenever you throw this device at the undead it will incapacitate them, making them go to sleep which also brings up the question well how is an EMP grenade having an effect on zombies which are essentially humans? EMPs are made to disable electrical and electronic equipment but we do know in BO2 the zombies are controlled by Richtofen or if you complete the buried easter egg Maxis through the ether so there must be some kind of electrical wave between the dark ether and the undead that is disabled when you throw an emp at them even then well we know in the very early days before samantha even took control of the zombies when they had no controller seemingly you would think if you severed that connection between them and the dark ether they'd still just roam around aimlessly not completely shut down so knowing all of that Yes, EMP grenades in zombies can cause this effect, but as far as we know, when you load into transit, an EMP grenade hasn't been thrown. One hasn't gone off, which means something else must have caused the zombies to act like this. Some of the theories I've seen people have is it could have something to do with Avogadro and him releasing a blast of electricity which created a sort of EMP that disabled the zombies in the bus depot. Another theory I've seen is it has something to do with Richtofen taking control of the undead after the moon ending. The only problem with that is moon took place in the year 2025, transit is in the year 2035, 10 years later. It's actually Nuketown that takes place at the same time as moon. At this point in transit, Richtofen has been in control of the zombies for quite a bit. So saying the reason why the zombies are nullified is because it's an effect of Richtofen taking control of them perhaps doesn't quite fit. Honestly, the only real scenario I can see because we have evidence of EMP grenades causing the zombies to act like it is there must have been some kind of EMP that went off that we don't know of. It doesn't necessarily have to be an EMP grenade. There are a few things that could cause an electromagnetic pulse. So to me, that would make the most sense. It's just then asking, well, what that would be. 
what would have caused an EMP. But those are three, to me, really interesting conspiracy theories within COD Zombies. Check out the rest if you haven't already. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video today. If you have, drop a like rating. Make sure you are subscribed to Step Today to release this content on the channel. Thank you all for watching, and obviously I will see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.